What a great time to be a Giant, be a fan of the Giants. Um, so happy and proud of, of the defense and the way we played in Minnesota. Uh, the two fourth down or the two uh, fourth quarter start uh, stops at the end of the game. Uh, I, it was just great to see, and it's you know, I I tell you guys all the time about how I, how much I care about this, these guys and how how close they are and selfless they are, and you saw that Sunday in that game, with all those players, whatever they had to do to win the game, and that's what they did. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. When can you guys shut down Jefferson? Can you shut down Smith and Brown? That's tough. You know, the more there are, the tougher it is. I think they got six. They, they got six Pro Bowlers on the offense and probably three snubs. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a talented group we're getting ready to face, and uh, you know, it's it, it's going to be a challenge for us. Pat, what changed from that, that first meeting against the Vikings, where, where Jefferson was kind of able to, to get off a little bit? What changed in the, the rematch there, where you were summed up? I, I think that's a, it, a, a few things. I, I think that it's you know we we came at full strength finally, and it was a total team effort. Uh, you know, to be able to do that and, and uh, you know, play some different coverages, try to take him away and the way the guys rushed up front. And, you know, what you can't forget is what the other guys are doing when you're doubling a receiver or you're moving coverage over the top of them. The other guys are winning their one-on-one situations as well. You know, Fabe had a great game the entire time. and. Uh, you saw Flot come in and, and have the big pass break up on third down. I'm just so proud of them because the work and concentration and execution and studying and, you know, all the things that they have done is, is, is paid off for them. And, you know, that's rookie or, you know, a veteran that hasn't played in, the, uh, in a playoff game yet like Leo. I mean, I thought he played lights out. You know, the guys up front played lights out. Uh, obviously, Dex, you saw what he did. He took the game over in that last series of, of, of the uh, fourth quarter. And uh, when, you, when you have guys playing like that, it's a, it's a lot of fun to watch. Wait, you didn't, you didn't complain when all these guys were hurt. You didn't like it, but you just kept going. But in the first game against the Eagles, there was no McKinney, there was no Fedori, and there was no Leo. You know, do you think the Eagles have really seen what this defense is all about yet? I didn't complain to you. <laughs> My wife, on the other hand, Laura, she heard some complaints. No, uh, you know, I, I, it's a we'll wait and see. You know, with uh, you know how they view us. I just I'm worried about how we view ourselves and and going to win this game. You know, it's uh, it's in the long run now. At the end of it, going in, you know, being in the playoffs, what it's done is help prepare our younger guys. You know, like Dane coming in the game, uh, didn't flinch. And, and play three different spots that, you know, because I told you it's positionless defense. He's, you know, a credit to him and the way he studies the game and the, he studies our package and their package and he executed, executed flawlessly. And, you know, credit to Rome and, and Mike, the way that he has all those guys prepared. How much can you do differently, add to it? I mean, like, <clears throat> Drip McKinney talked about being dropped into the box in the second half there more. And, like, the, how much more flexibility as a coordinator does it give you to have? him and Adore specifically back? I mean, the more players you have, the better it is. And, and you can be flexible that way. And, you know, that was an adjustment that we made, you know, as, as part of our counter punch there at the end with, uh, uh, you know, putting X, you know, that's somebody I didn't bring up. He, he played fantastic. Um, I mean, he ran ran the post route for Justin Jefferson on that, that long ball that you guys were all telling me was offensive pass interference, but I can't comment on it. Um, <laughs> Wait, how, how did Flot end up in that spot in, in late in the game? Was that intentional? Or was that? Uh, Fave needed a blow, you know. So he was in that spot. yeah, so he 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 went, you know, he just went right out on the field. I mean, there was no hesitation, no nothing. It was just because they they've been rotating before, and they'll they'll still rotate in this game. I mean, Flot's come a long way, and uh, I'm I'm really happy to see it. Did you gain a lot from your regular season finale when he was out there battling? I mean, I, I think that any experience people gain, and, uh, you know, you'd have to ask him that probably. But I just know that he's playing good football for us. Wait, wait, wait you go for a quarterback who is really a pocket quarterback. Right. So this week you've got the guy who's got wheels. 
Yeah. How much different is it? How much more of a challenge is it to stop first? I mean, he can. You know, everybody's saying he's having an MVP season, and I I agree because he can beat you with his legs. He can beat you just being a drop back quarterback. Uh, he can beat you with a sore, sore shoulder. You know, I mean, he can beat you a lot of different ways, and and that's a great challenge because, you know, there's there's a few. You know, just a few quarterbacks that can do it that way, and. Uh, you know, you can have him dead to rights back there in a the pocket, and he's, he's a magician. He'll get out of it. And I, I just really, I, you know, I'm not happy for the guy right now because I'm preparing for him. But you can see the work that he put in the past offseason and where he's at today is, to me, is two completely different quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, out of respect to the game, you, you respect that, that. You can see the hard work that he put in. So it, it's going to be a Tremendous challenge. What about from week 18 just till now? How much a different quarterback do you expect? Because they look like they were obviously using him differently in that game. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's off the injury report, so I'm expecting Jalen Hurts the MVP candidate. And I, I think if you expect anything less, you're kidding yourself because, you know, the guy's definitely a competitor. How did you approach that week 18 game? Because obviously you're, you're playing to win, but you didn't have your full personnel. Did you hold anything back? Or you, like, did you have to do things differently? Or did you just call it the way you call we it? We were trying to win the game. So and, I'm saying like schematically, did yeah. you call it the same way you call it if a Dorian Zay and all those guys are out there? Maybe, you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that gets into the, you know, punch and counter punch. You know, just same thing we gave the Vikings was a counter punch. Uh, something that they weren't, you know, ready for. And uh, so I think you, you do the same thing when you play an opponent. And now this is the third time we played him. So we know them, they know us. It's going to be a fun football game. Wait, how how impressed were you with the Dory Jackson to be away for seven weeks, jump back into the flow we got to throw up to Justin Jefferson and jump even faster? Right. Well, you know, he shadowed him the whole game. And, you know, that's the beginning of the team effort, you know, besides, you know, the rush and the other guys holding up and everything else. I am I'm happy for the player. The same same reason that I, I told you all before, and maybe you weren't here, is you know I'm happy for the person because he's worked his tail off. It's it's fun seeing him smile out on the field again, and he's a number one corner. So I, I, it was it was huge for him to come back. It was it was a, a big reason. It builds confidence in your entire defense and your coordinator. Uh, you know when you have him out on the field, and uh, I, I was really happy for him. Wait, this is something. This there, is yeah. something that kind of predates your arrival here. But mm -hmm. what? Uh, why has Boston Scott been able to basically be a Hall of Famer against the Giants? <laughs> well, if it's it predates my time here, I, I can't I can't answer that. You know, I mean, he's a good running back. They got a stable of good running backs. You know, so you know, I can't. I mean, I can't answer it. Well, he's, I mean, he scored against you guys. In the yeah, I mean, but I know just because he scored. I, I don't think he's a giant killer. But, uh, uh, I can't wait. There is a, there's a report, obviously, uh, you're going to be uh, interviewed for a coach. Uh, just talk about what it would mean to you to be a head coach in this league. Well, it's 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 one of those things. It's, it's an honor, you know, when they, they put a slip in because I think it's harder to get a head coaching job in this league than, than being in the Senate. And I'm not going to give you, uh, I'm not going to give you coach speak. All right, it's an honor, um, but we're not interviewing this week. You know, when I when I when I came here as as a giant, it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't a stepping stone for me. It was a destination, and I love it here in New York. I love the city. I think it's the greatest city in the world. I think it's the greatest fans in the world, and you know. The ownership, uh, Maris and Tisha's have been great to my family and, you know, honestly been locked in on Philly. We're not interviewing this week. And, uh, you know, I think that when the time comes, if, if there's still time, you know, when, when we can do it, I'd love to sit down and talk with them because that's the same thing I did three years ago. And that's how I met Mr. Mara the first time and sat down with him. And after that time on, I, I felt like he was a, a mentor and a friend. And, you know, you're talking about one of the titans of the league and, and you're working here, you know, you're, you're working in the, like I said, the greatest city and the greatest place in the world. It's not a slam dunk anywhere. It's, you know, you just weigh your options and, and make a decision. What, is it? what, what did you think of you roughing the passer for the Jets? It don't matter what I think, Pat. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I had text 
just as I'm sure you all had text after that game. And uh, I mean, they weren't very complimentary of the call of the text of all my buddies that are, you know, that, that, that were watching the game, you know, coaches and stuff like that. So it happens. It's a bang, bang play. Uh, you know, the thing that I was proud of is that we just played the next play like I talked to you guys about before. And, and we got we, we weren't going to let that affect us. And, uh, you know, I think it made Dex rush harder. I mean, they explained it, to you that it's for hitting his face or for falling on him or for They didn't explain him. anything to me. They no. talked to Brian about that. I, I just, because, you know, I got to go the next call. So I don't, like I said, uh, Mr. Goodell's never stopped a game today. Hold on, Wink's pissed. He wants to talk to the officials about something. You know, they're, they're, they're getting ready to go the next play. So.